Have you ever run into a parts list that doesn't match the real material that you're using? One customer I was working with did. They manufacture with T7 tool steel, but Fusion's default material library doesn't include it. In this video, I'll show you how to create a custom material inside of Fusion. That way, your drawing and parts list reflect exactly what's being used on the shop floor. So, let's dive right in. So like I mentioned in the uh, intro video, we're going to learn how to create a physical material. So currently, if I right click on this corner bracket and go to properties, you'll see that the material it's currently made out of steel. And if I go into the drawing, we can see that the parts list is showing that the material is made out of steel. Now we want to create a physical material of T7 tool steel. If I go into physical material and search under metal, um, I can, in fact, I can even do a search up here. I'll do a search for T7. You'll notice that the only material that it found was an aluminum with T73, but you'll see that there's no other like T7 tool steel. So we need to create our own custom physical material. Now the reason we want to do a physical material versus an appearance is physical material is going to add mass properties like the correct weight and thermal properties. So if we were going to do uh, simulation, uh, it's going to give the correct results for like weight and also, you know, thermal properties, etc. So under modify, we're going to go into manage materials. And this is going to bring up this material browser and you'll notice it's broken down into two tabs, physical and appearance. We want to make sure we're in the physical tab. And then we can see all of the different libraries. So we have the fusion material library. This is the typical library. Then we also have like this additive material, nonlinear material, and then the appearance. Uh, we're going to stick with this uh, fusion material library for now. What I like to do is find a material that's very similar to what we're trying to create. So for example, we're going to be creating um, T7 tool steel. So I am going to search for steel. So I'm just going to scroll down until I find steel um, or another steel that's very close to T7, for example. But to keep it simple, I'll just pick on steel. And you'll notice that there's a little lock symbol next to it, which is basically saying we can't modify the default material. But if I come over here, you'll notice this little icon that says adds material to the favorites and displays it in the editor. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And now you can see we're in this favorites section and we can see this steel and it's brought up this other section over here, which we'll get to here in just a moment. So I'm going to right click and rename this steel to uh, T7 tool steel. And now we can see the name is called T7 Tool Steel. I can uh, change the description if I want to. I'll go ahead and get rid of um, that mill finish and let's just call it T7 Tool Steel. Um, obviously we wanna keep the type as metal. If I click on that, you can see all the different types that we could set it to be, but we're gonna keep it metal. We could add in comments or keywords. I could um, you know, type in T7 tool, steel, etc. I could add in keywords there if I wanted to. I could even add in like the manufacturer and the cost and URL, etc. And what I'm going to do now is bring up a web page uh, where I want to do some searching for T7 tool steel. So I'm just going to go out to Google, do a search for T7 tool steel. And let's just pick on this one here. And this is going to bring up all of the information like the physical properties and mechanical properties of T7 tool steels and even the thermal properties. And this is the information that we need to add in to create our physical material. So I might actually even copy this web page here and put that information into here. And let's just do the AZO materials or whatever. Um, Okay, uh, for the appearance, I can specify the appearance if I want to. I might come in here and maybe make it like a slightly darker material if I wanted to. Uh, but the magic um, is really under this physical tab. And here you can see the thermal, mechanical, and strength sections. Now, you'll also notice that it's in like Fahrenheit and pounds and PSI. 
And if I go to this web page, we see it in like megapascals and gigapascals, etc. Um, we do see like PSI and KSI in Imperial. So we could enter some of the stuff in in Imperial or in metric. And I'm going to show you how you can change the settings. Um, I I'm going to change the settings to metric. So I also am going to be referencing this page quite a bit. So instead of going back and forth between this web page, I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and apply this and say, okay, I'm going to bring up a new design and I'm going to insert in a canvas. And I just did a screen capture of that, um, web page. And I'm just going to reference that like so. So I'm just going to bring it up here and kind of put it off to the side a little bit. Um, that way we're not having to bring up a web page every single time. So I literally just brought it in as a canvas. Uh, now when I come in here and bring up this manage materials, I can keep this table open. Um, and let me just bring that over a little bit like so. Maybe bring this over this way. That way we can see the numbers and not have to jump back and forth. So that's the reason I did this. Okay, so like I mentioned, um, we want to change the units for this. And to do that, that's actually in our preferences. So I'm gonna go into preferences and under unit and value display, down here at the very bottom, you'll notice it says material unit display. And let's change this to the metric standard. Hit apply and hit OK. And now when I come into the manage materials and we edit this, you'll see like gigapascals, megapascals, which we see here, Celsius, Celsius, etc. So things are matching. So you can see MK, MK, et cetera. So uh, I find that to be a little bit easier than the Imperial. So uh, you just have to change your preferences to that metric. Okay, so now we, we have our T7 tool steel that we're editing. I just clicked on that little pencil icon. We're in the physical, uh, and now we can start setting some of this. So thermal properties, uh, we can see here is um, thermal expansion coefficient. Uh, here's that thermal expansion coefficient, and it says it's 10, and this one says 12. So I'm going to come in here and just type in 10, like so. And we can see that the, uh, the units are the same. I'm not even going to pretend to uh, say what the units are here. <laughs> um, so then we have thermal, thermal conductivity is 25. So I'm just going to highlight all of those and type in 25, like so. Now this one doesn't have a specific heat. Uh, so what you could do is go out and do a search for what is the specific heat for T7 tool steel, for example. Now I did that and it came back as 0.48. Um, so I'm just going to leave that alone, but we're going to do that down here for some of this other stuff. So now uh, we're in the mechanical. So you'll notice um, the first one's Young's modulus. And here we have Young's modulus. And here it says, you know, 200,000 megapascals, but this one's in gigapascals. Um, so this, this says 200,000, so this should be 200. That's the difference between megapascals and gigapascals. Uh, again, if you're not 100% uh, sure, you can do something like, um, 200,000, um, you know, MPA into GPA, and you can see that equals 200 gigapascals. So if you need to do the conversion, that's what I typically do is just use Google for that. So we know that the Young's modulus is 200 gigapascals. Um, Poisson's ratio, we don't see that listed here. Um, once again, you could do a... Uh, Google search for that if you wanted to. Um, I'm going to leave that alone. Um, there's no uh, shears modulus for this. Um, we're going to leave that alone. 
Then we get down to the yield strength and we can see the yield strength here says it's anywhere between like 350 to 550 megapascals. So I'm just gonna kind of pick something maybe like in the middle. So let's just say like 425. So I'll just come in here and um, type in uh, 425 for that number. And then for the tensile strength, we can see that that's anywhere from 650 to 880. So maybe let's just do 750 or something like that for that one. And then it also asks, um, is it thermally treated? So sometimes, you know, tool steel, you know, you might heat treat that and, and you know, put it in oil or something like that. So I might check that to say it's thermally treated. And one of the last things we need to set in here is the density, uh, which we can see is right here, 7.7 cubic grams, and this is 7.85, so I'm going to change that to 7.7, .7 and then hit apply and OK. And now we've created our T7 tool steel. Okay, so we don't need this page anymore. Let's go to our corner bracket and go to physical material. And if we do a search for T7, we can now see this T7 tool steel under our favorites. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag that onto our component here. And you can see it's like a darker material now because um, we changed the appearance. If we were to right click and go to the properties, we can see that sure enough, the material name is T7 Tool Steel. I'm going to scroll down a little bit, expand, open this physical, and we can see that it's 105.233 grams. Um, I'm going to verify the difference between the T7 and regular steel um, because we changed the, um, the mass properties of that. So I'm going to change this back to steel. So remember 105.23. So let's just go back here, physical material. I think um, here's steel. And let's go ahead and check the properties again. And see how that's 107. So you can see the difference between the two materials now. Okay, so I'm gonna undo that so it's back to the T7. Uh, I'm also gonna go ahead and save this now. And let's go to our drawing. It tells us that changes have been made. I'll go ahead and update our drawing and we should see that this material now lists as T7 tool steel. And this was what the customer was hoping for is that the material would show up correctly in the parts list. So that's how you go about creating a custom material inside of Fusion. Um, obviously I used reference material from the web grabbing like you know the Young's modulus and the mass properties and thermal properties etc uh, but you can use this for like 3d printed materials um, different kinds of metals etc uh, so go ahead and give this a try and see what you think i hope you learned something new and enjoyed that video if you did make sure you like and subscribe to be notified of upcoming videos if you need help learning Fusion, visit my webpage at cadedllc.com. And as always, have fun learning Fusion.